Howdy there, folks. Yeah, it's about 1 a.m. or thereabouts. And, uh, same old deal. I can't sleep uh, during regular business hours. Not getting anything done. Canceled my appointment with the aid worker for tomorrow simply because I will probably want to be sleeping at that time. Uh, legs still the same. Haven't called Omni or haven't called uh, my new doctor slash injurers about um, the Omni orthopedics referral. Haven't communicated with them at all per, I believe, Cindy's suggestion. I'm not trying to like get it off paper that they injured my knee because, you know, like whatever. And as far as like getting another appointment with them, I got an appointment coming up on the 20th. I'm not going to get an appointment with them before that to do anything about my knee anyway. So I just have to like suffer it out. I think it's the uh, 6th today since it's Tuesday. Um, nice lisp there, by the way, on 6th. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry about not answering what few replies I got. I just ain't been feeling it. Just um, mostly not just not good. But anyways, I did walk. And I'll probably walk here in a little while. I did walk um, like two days ago. So I can walk on it. It's just extremely painful to the point where like it makes me sweat walking on it just walking on it I'm not talking about like exertion I actually sweat from the pain so it's just like very painful and it's like I thought it hurt bad before but it's like I say it always cracks me up when people say things could be worse is of course things could be worse I could be like swimming in a bat of scorpions right now of course things always can be worse as life taught you nothing but anyways, um, I thought I would, I haven't done anything, talk to you, you folks for a while, so, you know, just in case anybody was worried about me. Uh, yeah. I bought a backdrop. I, and what I need to do is I need to take that cardboard, I need to uh, put this giant cardboard back th there, I need to, like, carve out, like, with a magic marker, like, how big exactly of an area do I need to cover up to have a background? Other than like, I don't know, water bottles, cardboard boxes, and miscellaneous crap, and an old bed stand that's from, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. Um, I think 12 years ago. But, uh, yeah, so I couldn't really find any, I found anything cheap, so for like $12.41, I don't like the color, but it, it was like a red autumn tree type background. And this stupid company... Uh, of course, uh, writes me and they're like, uh, yeah, we don't have that, so we can issue you a refund. And I'm like, cool, just give me my money back. But they were like, opened up a claim with eBay, wanting me to cancel the thing, and eBay's like, do not cancel any bid before you get your refund. So I'm like, hey, give me my refund. And they're like, hey, we'll give you your refund when you cancel your bid. And it's like, I'm not sure how you understand how business works because you have my money and my product. I am at a disadvantage here. So I opened a claim against them over $12.41 saying I haven't received my item yet. In other words, either you send me my shit or I get for my $12.41. I'm not <laughs> canceling my bid and having you keep my money because they got shitty feedback anyway. And, you know, once you get like Oh, in five figures on feedback, one negative feedback is not going to affect you at all. You know, once you're in the thousands, it's like it's your percentage won't drop, you know. So they got nothing to lose as far as screwing me over. So, but I, I got to make sure I get my $12.41 back for my uh, autumn red tree background that's supposed to be here, but it's not. Typical, typical behavior from people, people. 
Anyways, I sunk myself even deeper into eBay. A couple of things happened as far as eBay, but uh, I found out that I bought this lot on a whim of this guy named Justin Herbert, who wasn't even supposed to get the start, but he he started and he's really good. He lost all three games he started, but he's really good. And I already had a lot of cards of him that I got for cheap. And I was watching his cards climb and his notoriety climb because uh, he's very good. And um, I actually hadn't invested in the guy. I just bought a lot of cards on, of his on a whim because I was able to get him for free shipping as part of a package deal. Because somebody on the internet named the franchise guy that does a deep dive analysis of teams and players was like, uh, we've seen this guy type of guy before. I don't think he can read defenses. He's just a big, huge six foot six guy. And he, he mentioned, he compared him to a, a Mitchell Trubisky or some other guy who's a bust. And that guy gave me good advice on other players. He gave me shitty advice on this player or, you know, I, but I did buy the one lot of him regardless, actually two lots. One of them was just a small lot, but it had a a card limited to ten. So I like uh, invested a few more hundred dollars in this particular player. The bad news for me is like my main guy that was just about ripe and ready to sell. Uh, he got rolled up on Nick Chubb in Sunday's uh, victory versus the Cowboys. Now it's a good thing that they won, but that's a very bad thing that he got his leg rolled up on because he's going to be out for at least six weeks and miss five games because they're going to have a bye week. So that means his cards are not going to be, you can still sell them, but they're not going to be where they should be. I mean, I was waiting for them to peak. Uh, the guy don't say nothing. He's a very low profile guy. He literally don't say anything. So when he was laying on the ground screaming, and crying, I was like, oh, fuck me. That ruined, like, the whole game for me. Because I, I have, like, as far as value, not as far as what I paid for him, I have thousands of dollars worth of this guy's cards, and he's laying on the ground screaming. And I'm like, the thing about football cards is, like, this is why I never used to invest in football. I used to invest in baseball cards. But with football cards you can make a lot of money but this kind of thing happens because of the nature of the beast you don't see baseball players writhing around on the ground in agony every game but you see it every game in football maybe that's why you can make so much money is because people want to grab a card and get rid of it fast I don't know but you can make a lot of money in football cards as a matter of fact I just put one card up it's got five days to go it's already over a hundred dollars just one card so, uh, that's good. That train's really loud, man. It feels like it's going to crash through the window. Did they move the tracks? Or, like, is this just me? It's really, really quiet, so this train's crazy. I can hear it, actually hear the, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it rolling across the tracks. Sounds, probably sounds like a fan to you. But the air conditioner's off, everything's off, it's super quiet. That's weird. I always hear the horn, but I never hear the tracks like that. How close is this train? I'm going to have to get off here and Google. Now the, the whistle's getting quieter. I'm sure this is fascinating. The whistle's getting quieter as it moves off into the distance. Damn. Anyways, uh, I have a story associated with trains not me trying to hop the train with the one-eyed hamster but another story associated with trains involving a guy who was a uh, had a warrant in the car and us breaking one of the barrier things uh, because he was like just go just go so we ran the railroad tracks when the barriers were dropped because he saw a cop like at some point and was paranoid and he's like i got warrants just go just go 
thought the cops was after him or something like that. Anyways, that I'm not going to tell that story because I, it's stupid. <coughs> it's not a very good story anyway. But what happened? I'm already mired in it now. Uh, what happened was uh, the uh, we tried to go around the barriers, but the barrier uh, pole got caught in the window, and we snapped it off and broke it. So, not only was it like pointless, probably marijuana induced paranoia, and there was, he saw a cop sometime back. Um, I think we had weed in the car, and he didn't want to get stopped because he had warrants, but he was like, I got warrants, man, just go, just go. So, uh, we ran in front of a train. Uh, kids, silly kids. But, anyways, um, so I used to have a life. Now my life is very boring. My life is so boring that I bought sinkers for my brother to fish with in the Niagara River where I used to go all the time. Because they have these sinkers they call drift sinkers that are supposed to... I was very disappointed. I was disappointed in something that I bought him. He was happy because it was free shit to him. But uh, these sinkers are not cheap. But they're like... They look like a... Pen, they look like... I don't have a pencil. They look like this, right? The idea is they're called drift sinkers. So you fish in a river with them and they keep your bait off the rocks and keep your bait from being snagged. And apparently they were like short little ones. And I was like, well, that's not what the picture said. So I was all like, I'm not even going to be fishing with the things, but I'm doing an ex a fishing experiment through other people. I'm, I am, uh, fishing vicarious, vicariously through other people. So I have to watch porn and uh, fuck through other people. I have to catch fish through other people. I have to do everything. This is no kind of life. This, this life sucks. So, yeah, I hate all of it <laughs> right now. I'm just very hateful. I told my brother about smuggling the cakes. I just, my voice should sound okay. Even though I got like a big wad of gum in my mouth. Uh, I just talked to my brother and explained the cake situation. He didn't understand um, like why. He's like, why are you not eating the cake? And I said, because I hate my sister. I, don't, I didn't use, I used her name, of course. And uh, he was, he didn't have nothing to say about that. But he didn't understand. He doesn't understand because he wasn't there. And he's, you know, my sister's the one that's gabbing about this stuff, dragging other family members into it. I just want it to be settled between the two of us and not make other people suffer. But I figured, like, I told him, like, listen, I'm going to give you this cake, but you got to keep it on down low and treat it like I'm giving you drugs. Because if you tell anybody that I give you this cake, I'm never going to give you any food ever again. <laughs> I used to like load him up with those meals on wheels, crap meals, and uh, he'd eat them. Well, he'll eat anything just because uh, he's poor and uh, he's um, trying to save money. To at the time, he had no water at all. Now he doesn't have any hot water, so you get the idea. Um, so I'm gonna try to smuggle that out of here. I owe him some money, and he doesn't have his uh. PayPal link to his bank, so I'm like, to be on the safe side, instead of like PayPaling you or wiring the, you the money, I'll give you the money in cash, and uh, you know, but as far as this cake thing, I don't want to feed it to raccoons, it's probably still good, because uh, I took it, I think it was in the refrigerator for four, five, six days or something like that, and I threw it in the freezer, it'll eat anything anyway, so like if you get food poisoning don't blame me but I had explained to him that I hate my sister and you don't understand it you know but he wasn't there and I don't talk to him about it I figured out why he is so quiet he is uh, whenever I talk to him about my problems is because he knows that me and you know like I told him flat out you know like like my sister is dead to me until she confronts the situation and he was like, well, I don't want to be dead to you. So he's afraid of saying the wrong thing is why he's quiet whenever I talk to him about my troubles because he's afraid of offending me because you don't have a lot of people. So he has a, he has more people than I do 
because uh, I am like excommunicated, like removed from the family. So he has, he still has the family. And uh, he has, you know, he spends more time with my best friend than I do. I just talk to my best friend over the phone. Um, so, but even still, he's afraid of like, because of the emotional support that I provide him, he's afraid of me like uh, freaking out on him because, you know, it's like, I explained to him that's not going to happen to you because uh, you you ever hear me cry and he's like no and I'm like well you, you wouldn't do what she did so it's not going to happen but that's why he's so quiet I'm pretty sure I'm not going to ask him about it he don't do that kind of things as soon as I explained the cake situation suddenly he had to get off the phone so you know he was happy to talk about fishing for like an hour and a half before that you know because that's like his thing um, and I'll talk fishing all I can do is talk blow money on eBay and try to sell cards which I didn't put very many cards up I, I'm, I gotta get a different lamp in here with more light it's all about the pictures you take I found out also that like when the uh, COVID thing hit, I bought a box of rubber gloves, you know, like just latex gloves, the thin ones that the doctors use. Uh, so I only had like one pair left, and I found out like, well, I can handle these cards, and you have to take them out of their holders and take them out of their sleeves and, you know, take a picture of the raw card. And then I, what I need to do is like cut a piece of flannel shirt since I don't have felt, and like you, you gotta like scrub down the surface with something to remove any debris because it's going to show up in the picture so I took really good pictures of this uh, Josh Allen um, rookie card which is very hot right now as far as sellability and I took really good pictures of it so it's going to go for probably $130, $140 because it looks very nice but it's all about the pictures you take but the other pictures I didn't have enough light for I had this thing where I was bending the I don't mean to torture you, but I was bending the light, like, toward me. But I couldn't keep it from sliding back and forth. But that's how I was able to get good pictures. And I was like, I just got another lamp that's got, like, a, you know, the lamp that's got the upper lamp, and then it's got the lamp on the stock, the reading lamp that you can adjust. I just need to drag that in here and find a place to plug it in and clean up this. Again, leg being the barrier, I have to clean up this room a little bit and rearrange shit. I'm, I'm still laying on a towel on a filthy mattress. Uh, yeah. It reminds me of a Rolling Stone song, something about a uh, filthy room, me and a Coke spoon. Um, I think it's Let It Bleed. It's the name of the song. Oh, there's some water running upstairs. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah, my life is too much too boring for me to uh, be making videos all the time. There's nothing going on except for me suffering. That's not particularly interesting. And I don't have anything to talk about, so, you know, why bother you? Um, Waiting through memories, not even sh sure, like, which ones I've talked about, which ones I haven't talked about. It's like, it's not like I had a really adventurous life. I mean, I did not serve time overseas. Or it wasn't a rattlesnake wrangler. Maybe that sounds kind of gay. I wasn't a snake handler or a snake charmer. Uh, yeah, I didn't really have an exciting life. I don't know because I had a spinal tumor when I was 16, spinal reconstruction when I was 20, etc., etc. But, you know, I tried to have a life. I tried to do things regardless. But since my leg's been screwed up, I don't do anything, go anywhere, see anybody. That doesn't make for good videos. Uh, but yeah, I will continue to figure this out as far as a backdrop. I need a backdrop. I'm thinking, get a nature scene that I really like. I thought about like a nebula galaxy, like putting that behind me. I don't know what that would look like. The thing of it is, unless you're buying from the Chinese, you know, so that's why I have to be careful about the size. I don't know if two foot by three foot would cover this whole space here. 
that would be cool. And then if I get the other lamp in here, I can try some different lighting. You know, work on my production values before I open up my Patreon account and start begging for money. I think if I was going to beg for money, I would have done it by now. But, uh, no, I just figure, like, uh, why not? You know, it's not going to cost me that much money. Why not put a backdrop in here? As far as the lamp, I'm only changing the lamp is, uh, because I got to get... This is where I, what I do is I, I lay down a white piece of paper here. I put up a screen, scenic screen on my computer of the mountains. I take my little card stands and I put them up here. And I take pictures in front of these scenic things. You know, I'll shout, uh, please don't be uh, as a way of charity. <laughs> Not, please don't do that. But I'll show you what I mean by uh, putting a link. I won't even put a well, it's too, if I put a link up to one, you'll just be able to find the other one. But don't. Yeah, don't. Please. No charities. <laughs> but I'll show you what I mean. Like, as far as, uh, I'll show you the ad that uh, is doing real well. That, um, how I did it. And I just took a piece of toilet paper, of all things. You know, I'm using toilet paper on something that's going to sell for maybe as much as $150. It will sell between $100, $150 guaranteed. I'm just taking toilet paper and going over top of it, making sure it doesn't have any lint on it. And I got gloves on to make sure I'm not getting any fingerprints on it. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be my... T I, I, I let a lot of stuff go early that I was like, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't understand the new... I was overconfident. I was cocky. So, like, uh, I let a lot of stuff go. And I wondered, like, I could have got a lot more money for that if I would have just... Uh, knew what I was doing. I mean, of course, the game has changed as far as selling things after years. I mean, I really haven't sold things seriously on uh, eBay for 15 years. Um, I sold things like seven years ago or something like that so I could get my sister's uh, cats uh, spayed and neutered. But that was like a different type of deal. You know, I had like a table and a lamp over top of the table and I was selling like mass quantities of cards and just selling these huge lots for ridiculously low prices and they were basically like nickel and dime type shit. This is like serious shit. This is like, you know, the last card I netted $128 on this for one card. Guy's happy as a motherfucker to get it too. Um, in Niagara Falls, he's from Niagara Falls, New York, which is funny because that's where we go fishing and that's where I bought the sinkers for is the Niagara River. I believe I discussed that before. They have a, a special um, Niagara River platform pier. I think I even posted that link, but I'll do it again for the, for the fuck of it. Showing the area that I've spent many a long frustrating day on. They have like an underwater shot. It's really cool. Well, I think it's cool. And then they show you the pier, and they show some, you, you show somebody catching a, a fish off of the pier that uh, I used to be able to go fishing on. And I would go to the place that I shipped that card to for $128. And I was like, yeah, I fish beside guys you probably know. It's like I fished in your neck of the woods many times at two different places. And uh, it's a thing I'm trying is like, talking to the actual sellers so like we have um so like if they're upset or unhappy I can find out you know like the salesperson type relationship like you know putting a name if not a face and uh some patter using my ability with words to try to make things go smoother and he did comment like, oh, it did have like a little dent on it, but it's still like a really good car and I'm really happy with it and stuff. And it's like, I wonder if like that dent that was little would have became like a huge divot, like on a golf course, if I wouldn't have been like email after email with him before he got it. I don't know what the hell else I got to do. You know, I got my new cup, which I was, I'm slightly disappointed with, which, um, it's,
The letters aren't bright enough. That's why I don't like it. I don't like that sickly color of yellow, green in the middle. How in the fuck does that represent sex? The sex, the, the love stuff should be blue. The uh, sex stuff should be red. The porn stuff should be some kind of neon color. Something gaudy. But yeah. I like the, uh, the logo. I don't like the colors, the patterns, or the clarity of same. Just, uh, but it is a good cup. And it only costs 15 bucks, and it's not going to last very long before I break it anyway, so. But yeah, uh, it's just kind of a, occasionally I like to blow money on things other than football cards. With football cards, a lot of times you think you're like just blowing money frivolously, and uh, things just work out to where those cards are very expensive. I was very nervous about dropping $257 for this lot of cards. I was like, that's kind of crazy. But it turns out that two, co two cards out of this 42 card lot is going to probably cover the entire expense of the lot, and the rest is gravy. So it's going to work out great. But I wasn't too sure about it. I was like, eh. I don't know, man, if that was a good thing I did or not. I know I have to take better pictures. Learn how to figure out how to do that. There ain't nothing I can do about the sleeping thing, though, man. I mean, I just don't give up on that. Uh, I could drink coffee all the time, but I got a heart condition. That's not a good idea. Because if I drink coffee all the time, I have to be full of caffeine and have to piss all the time. It's kind of hard to sleep during the day if you're, you know, miserable drinking coffee and pissing all day. It's kind of hard to do that sleeping. Uh, but, yeah, there's no getting out of this as far as the sleeping schedule. I mean, I've tried everything since the 22nd of last month. Of like uh, staying awake extra long, trying to sleep in extra long, all the things that usually work. It's just the pain is just too overwhelming. Um, yeah, I do have to do some things in here. Um, in this room specifically. In order for me to have room to flip the mattress on its side, take off the nasty old cover, put on new cover because they gave me one an extra one accidentally they cost 20 24 dollars a piece these uh, bed bug ceiling they have a zipper on on the back of them you know they cost uh 24 bucks a piece they sent me two of them when i only ordered one so i have one that i can just throw on it and then i'll finally get the lay on a sheet they're kind of scratchy like i said you won't be able to see it but uh, my voice is i must have talked to my brother too long my voice is definitely not mellifluous today. <coughs> <coughs> but, you know, I know y'all worry about me if I don't check in from time to time because that's not normal behavior for a chatterbox like myself. Um, this is the 15 ounce cup. It's like, I didn't know how much 15 ounces was, but this is a very, a very big cup as far as I'm concerned. I don't consider that a big cup. So I didn't know how much. They had a 12 ounce and a 15 ounce cup. I'm like, you better send me the 15 ounce cup. I repeatedly told them I want the 15 ounce cup. And I found out the other cup that I was drinking out of holds 15 ounces. It just doesn't look as big as this cup. So I did not gain any ground in the war of uh, the ounces. It just is what it is. Uh, but I do have a handle on it, so I can do this. I don't have to do this when I wake up in the morning. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing going on, nothing to talk about. Mm. Psychological miseries. Uh, a lot of um, mm, more suicidal ideation than usual due to the fact that, I don't know, my leg's all fucked up now. So, it's even worse than it was before. I did walk on it, but it was from my heart, more or less. And, uh, my cat's okay. He's doing okay outside. Apparently, he's top cat. So, you know, 
there was a little cartoon called Top Cat from way back in the day. Um, but he's Top Cat, apparently. If he's hungry, he's eating and nobody else is. So I don't have to worry about him in that regard. I threw a box out the window just because cats love boxes. And there was another cat sitting in the box. But uh, I think it jumped in there for refuge. Because it's weird. Like, my cat does uh, pre-feed groundwork we'll call it. In other words, like he hears me opening the window and he's already like hissing and, and like clearing a space like this food is mine, bitches. So apparently he is still uh, vital enough and young enough to be scared the shit out of these other two cats that are out there. So, you know, maybe I'll get to go outside and check on his coat. And Maybe he'll let me pet him or whatever. I don't know. Let's talk to him out the window. I'm giving him the good food now. and uh, It was really sad when I had the Purina because I knew he was waiting for food all night. And then I'd lower out the Purina and he'd look up at me forlorn. And he's like, I gotta, really got to eat this shit. And I'm like, yeah, that's all we got, brother. Until I get paid on the second, that's all you get. So uh, now he's got the good shit, though. And he's got um, Temptations cat treats that I sprinkle on top of it, so he's, I can at least do that for him. Um, the weather has hasn't been bad around here. I think the lowest it got was um, 38, 39, and something like that. Um, and he's got long experience with survival outside, so he'll be all right. He's not really, he still has to come inside from time to time, but uh, I'm hardly ever out there, so I don't know how often he's asking to come inside, but a couple of times he heard me rummaging around in the house and come around, and then uh, I ring the bell out the, out the back here, and he comes around the front and goes out the back and eats, so, you know, I think he's got another winner in him. Uh, whether he has a weird looking eye and looks old or not. Uh, my brother had a cat that was black that got gray on his balls. He does not, he did not have the same like emotional reaction to when uh, a human being finds their first gray pubes. After all, they're covered all over with fur and they don't think about these things. But yeah, that's always not. I'm not going to take it any further than that. You need not worry. Because you already know what I'm talking about. I probably. <laughs> it's just one of them uh, passages and rites of passage in life that, uh, like, when I was going bald when I was 34. And I'm not saying, like I said, I'm not saying anything else about it. I'm just saying it's, it's a thing. But this cat was funny because he didn't have gray anywhere else, but he had gray balls. Um, yeah. The cat's name was Zeus, and he had a, I don't know if he got kicked or what the hell happened to him, but he had like a messed up front leg, but he was meaner than fuck, and uh, he had to be, and my brother like picked him up for some godforsaken reason, and then a car came by, and he ripped the living shit out of my brother, my brother was like, had ribbons of flesh banging off him, he was bleeding, and I'm like, why didn't you put him down, and he's like, I was... I didn't want to put him down when the car was going by, and it happened really fast anyway. I was like, yeah, a cat can cause you, a cat might not be lethal, but it can cause you pain like you, you would not believe. I've been, like I said, been bitten by a cat all the way down to the gums in my hand, and uh, been, been laid open by cat scratches, real cat scratches, not those little pussy ones. So I've been talking about the ones that trip blood. And, uh, yeah, it ain't no joke. It causes some serious damage. And serious in the sense that it's extremely painful and likely to get infected. I'm, I'm lucky I didn't have to get a tetanus shot for the uh, cat bite because uh, I already had a tetanus shot and they last for five years. So I had a tetanus shot for just as a matter of course. Not that I would have got one anyway. You know, I just would have rolled the dice. And I'm not sure what tetanus does to you, but we would have seen. It 
fuck my car. Anyways. So yeah, it's um, almost 2 o'clock in the morning. And I'm drinking coffee. And this is... Uh, I'll probably get sleepy around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Or so. I suppose I can make phone calls in the morning. But my head is just not in a good place. And, um... Yeah. Like I said, I'm going to go in there on the 20th anyway for the physical thing. And meet the actual doctor, not Jeff, whoever the fuck Jeff is, or whatever the fuck Jeff ty Jeff's title is, if he's a medical practitioner. Whatever fucking title they have for a junior doctor try in training, or I don't know what the fuck his title is. But uh, I'm going to see the actual Dr. Mason guy on the 20th, I'm assuming, for my physical. So, you know, not too... I'm not too keen on uh, putting out a lot of effort. I'm just trying to survive. I'm not putting out a lot of effort about pushing the Omni um, Orthopedics referral because I can do it in person in like two weeks. So, unless I offend them so badly at my physical, maybe I should think of it that way. Like, get the Omni. Referral. Yeah, I should probably think of it that way. Get the Omni referral first in case the physical goes really badly. Because, like I said, people tend not to like me. So, there is a chance they can be like, yeah, we don't want you as a patient because uh, you got a weird disease and uh, we don't like the way you talk to us. And I'll be like, cool. Because if I have the Omni orthopedics referral, then I can go to, the, go to them for my knee which is, of course, my main concern. And I can find another doctor to go to. After all, I go to this doctor the first time, and it seems like they injured my knees. So why in the fuck would you want to go back to somebody that, uh, yeah, yanks on your knee and causes you severe pain anyway? You got to have a, a doctor, right? So uh, as far as where I'm at on the... Uh, volume, I'm still like five days ahead. Um, let's see, today is the 6th. Wednesday, I could act, uh, let's see, it's Tuesday the 6th, right? Yeah, okay, you agree with me. So, tomorrow is when I'm allowed to get my prescription filled, but I can't pick it up until the 8th. But going by the 7th, I'm five days ahead on my prescription, which is like 15 pills so I didn't really have that bad of a month as far as my benzo intake uh, even though like I had that day with that appointment where I took a shitload of benzos and then I had the initial reaction to my knee injury before I got to get a bent where I was taking uh, four a day for either two days or three days when my dose is three and I usually take two so I counted them out the other night. I was like, oh, I'm still five days ahead. So, um, you know, it's kind of been my goal. Instead of, like, quitting benzos, since I'm really not in a position to quit, what, what with the not walking, not seeing anybody, not being able to do anything, and uh, the uh, my general situation, um, is just to keep the dose low. As low as possible, what I call a jumping off point. So we're... You know, I get some relief with the knee if I get the fuck out of this fucking building or to where I can actually sit outside and I can move somewhere else, you know. Um, I still haven't been put on the waiting list. Uh, even my uh, psychic, not only did my case manager, whose job it is to put me on the waiting list, fail and is get, taking a job somewhere else. Um, the uh, psychiatric nurse also failed to put me on the waiting list. So I have to do it myself, you know. It's like, I have to go online and, you know, get the application form and I gotta link up my computer to my printer. And it's like, I don't wanna do anything, man. I need to, yeah, my leg hurts. I need to clear out this room, get the air conditioner out of the window because it's getting cold at night. I got shit, other shit I gotta do. I don't wanna be fucking around with no printer. I do wanna be on a waiting list. You know, hopefully I didn't fuck that up already. Suppose, like, 
if this Brent guy would have done his job like, I don't know, two months ago when I was on the waiting list, suppose a spot opened up and now a guy gets in there that should be me that's healthy and that's going to live there for like 10 years because they only got like 32 spots at this place. Or it could be that, you know, maybe <laughs> my God will smile upon me or I will have good luck and... Uh, this is the way it's supposed to work out and then when I do get on the waiting list they'll be like oh you know um Clarice uh fledgling I was gonna say Clarice Starling but that's like a character off of Silence of the Lambs not a good reference so I used another bird so uh or a, a term referring to birds Clarice fledgling uh died you know so we have this place open for you and I'll be like jump out of here like a frog off a lily pad like a pork frog off a lily pad ha 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 so um there's still that but yeah that's the thing is like it's just me here I gotta get the shit done so if I'm being tortured and not being able to sleep it's kind of hard to get shit done I can't depend on anybody I can't depend on doctors I can't depend on a uh, psychiatric profession I can't depend on case managers whose job it is to help me out. I can't depend on family. I can't depend on nobody but me. It's up to me to get this shit done. And me right now is not in a good place mentally and is in, and is in a literal hell physically. So, um, yeah. So I'm gonna see, see, see. But yeah, I should call him up tomorrow and ask him um, before I get sleepy in the morning, you know, ask him about the referral to Omni um, Orthopedics in case the, uh, you're not sticking a finger up my ass appointment, um, goes badly. And they're like, well, if you're not going to cooperate, we don't want you for a patient. I'm like, and I walk out the fucking door. It's not like I haven't done it before. And, um, or I could tell him like, yeah, you don't want me for a patient anyway I got one doctor that got murdered and I had another one that's in jail right now for raping 11 year old girls and besides I don't know what you people get up to on the weekends anyway so fuck y'all I'm leaving it's not like I haven't done something similar in the past so you know uh, it's not necessarily misplaced anger at the medical community because uh yeah I have not been treated nicely by them and some of it is uh, carelessness on their part. Some of it is carelessness, uh, not carelessness, but that whole that thing where like, I ain't going to the doctor type thing. That was even before I had a reason to fear doctors. It's like, oh, I ain't going to the doctor. They might see my pee pee. Just, you know, when I was a little kid. Uh, yeah, later on. Can remember some things that I'll spare you uh, that were hmm. not very good the kind of stories you might be interested in hearing but I'm not interested in telling right now so you gotta take what you can get for free you know it's like my brother with the sinkers he was happy as fuck that he got free sinkers I was mad because I was like, I was like that's not the, sh the picture that they showed because he was saying they were little short things I'm like, no, they're supposed to be long, and they're supposed to drag across the bottom. And I was like, damn it. So I was mad about it because I was the one that paid for them. But he's like, hey, free shit, man. Thanks for the, the sinkers. It cost 20 bucks for 30 of them. They're drift, drift sinkers. Very expensive. Very, they're specialized sinkers. They're not mass produced. You know, this guy made them in a basement with, uh, um, a lead mold type thing you know with some kind of mold he even wrote it in his head what kind of mold he used to make them and they're not something that you can find in tackle shops readily so you know it's twenty dollars for thirty of them but uh, I don't know. spent fifteen dollars on a mug that says all you need is love all you want is sex all you have is porn so I did need a coffee mug, but coffee mugs, I could have just got, I just could have just talked to my niece, who I really don't want. I don't, yeah, I don't want to 
say too much about that either. Uh, so what the hell am I doing on here if I don't want to talk about anything? Uh, I'm just... Well, my stomach's talkative at least. Uh, no, you know, I figured like, uh, y'all, some of y'all get worried. Y'all is emotionally attached to me. So, no, I don't know. I don't know. It's just like somebody said, like, I haven't heard from you from, for a few days. I was kind of wondering. I think somebody said they was worried about me once. I like, yeah. I've been on here for a few days. And I said I would be on here if things were going well, but things have not been going well. I just, yeah. Just don't want to be a uh, Captain Wet Blanket Dippy Downer type dude. And be depressing. But reality is reality. Mine seems to be getting steadily worse, which is not good. Uh, maybe I'll get a, a case, I always try, see I'm always just such an optimist, maybe I'll get a case manager that actually will do their job and not pretend to be my friend. I don't need somebody to pretend, I don't need a friend. Actually it would be nice to be have a friend. I don't necessarily need one, but it'd be nice to have one, you know, especially a guitar playing friend, which I've always wanted. Even though I knew two guys that played guitars, like, forever, since we were teenagers, we never played guitars together. So, it makes as much sense as anything. But, don't need friends. Need out of here. Need to move into a different place where I'm not, like, assaulted with noise, trapped in a room, living in a shitty place. And, um, I can be outside. That's the main thing. I looked outside, and I was like, man... Outside is weird. Look at all those trees and bushes, and I was noting how some of the leaves had turned. Because um, from being a fisherman, I noticed uh, certain leaves turn quicker than other leaves. I don't, I forget the names of the trees. Which ones turn quickest? I think maple trees. I think the leaves turn the quickest, or maybe it's oak. I don't know, but I, it's just the way way it works. Is um, yeah. I didn't get a chance, well, you'd have to understand my brother, but I didn't get a chance to ask him about the pictures that I've been wanting to ask him about, but it, you'd have to talk to him to understand. Um, I hadn't noticed that for a while. To understand, like, why it's like you just can't ask simple things. Nothing simple in my family. When I was a kid, my dad had a knife that he got in Germany. That's why I said I haven't noticed that in a while. I mean, a little kid. And uh, this knife was handmade by a guy, and he had a story behind the knife. But it was like a kitchen knife. It wasn't a killing people knife. It was a kitchen knife, well, I don't know, yay long. And it had, like, beautiful engraving of stags. He picked it up in Germany while he was in the army. Of uh, stags and, um, like, all kind of engravings all over it and it was like super high quality steel and the guy that was the knife maker in whatever year this was sometime in the 50s uh, he had one and he's like uh, I make good product uh, can't do German can't do accents god man I wish I would yeah I would definitely pay like if I could rent it like Netflix, I would rent the ability to do uh, accents. $100 a month. Easy. Maybe $200 a month. But anyways, this guy was like, let me show you how good my knife is. And he took his knife, and it didn't have a handle on it yet. It just had like the, the metal block. And he took a hammer, and he drove it with a hammer, which you're not supposed to do with knives, straight into a block of wood. And uh, my dad was, he was like, I'll get you other knife, and my dad was like, no, I want that one. So anyways, I'm a little kid. He keeps knives razor sharp because he loves knives. And I remember looking at my finger, and the top of it was just hanging off like that. And there's a line that I had noticed for years, like right below my fingernail that won't show up on camera. 
that goes around there, but I remember holding up my finger and seeing the top of it like hang sideways. I was like, Aah. like any any little tiny kid. I remember my I was like eye level with the uh, kitchen table, so there's. I don't think that was my earliest memory. My earliest memory, I think, is of a catfish in a swimming pool, but that was close to my earliest memory. What is it with these fucking trains? Now, is that Transylvanian accent? I don't know. But, uh, I, I noticed that line there on my finger where I, I'm right-handed, where I chopped off the end of my finger, and they, like, stitched it back on. I hadn't noticed that scar for a while, but I was so tiny that it's just a little tiny indentation. Now, um, I just have a vague memory of it. And I remember being eye level with the table more than anything else and then dropping the knife on the floor after I chopped the top of my finger off with it. But yeah. Oh, I have plenty of things like that that are probably hidden somewhere in my psyche. I mean, when you grow up in my house, and you grow up in a place where, like, you ride in the backs of trucks when the trucks don't even have any beds in them when you're a little kid, uh, and you watch your brother, like, um, shoot guns in the suburbs in, like, a little backyard out the window with his feet propped up on, the, on a chair and drinking coffee with the gun pointed out the window just killing random squirrels, rabbits, birds, whatever. You have all kind of strange memories that are like hidden somewhere in there. I tried to like fix my hair a little bit. I, I, what I tried to do is I put my glasses on. So I'm still going to try to do the sideburn things. I tried to like run the clippers like over top. It didn't work though, as you can see. And uh, I haven't felt like putting much energy into it. I haven't gone anywhere, so, you know, I just look in the mirror this time and do it freehand. Instead of tracing, I was tracing uh, with the uh, my glasses. Because that part around the ear is hard to get anyway. So I just take the clippers and leave the sideburns. Sideburns, though, I was going to have, like, crazy sideburns, but um, they kind of, like, my sideburns, because my hair is a little wispy will probably tickle my ears and bother me, so they don't, I don't know. Just a dumb idea I had while I'm sitting around being bored. Um, yeah, the shaving thing's getting old. I seem to like need to do it all the time. It's very annoying. Uh, yeah, I remember what, like I said, when I was 20, I had to shave like twice a week, and it was optional. Everybody else was like jealous. Man, I gotta shave every day. He's like, nah, I shave. Like, it wasn't for lack of testosterone. I mean, I had belly fur and shit. Uh, I had a lot of belly fur. I didn't have. I just like didn't. I still can't grow a decent beard. You know, I don't want to, because it itches. When it gets even, it's, it's almost to the itching point now. Um, but yeah, it's annoying. It's enough grooming talk. Next I'll be talking about plucking my eyebrows or something. See, I got nothing to talk about, so why should, why should I talk about here? Talk, why should I talk on here? Or well, not talk about it anyway. Um, uh, I can talk about the stupid world we live in, but uh, the fact that Trump has uh, the coronavirus, that's sort of interesting. And um, I guess he's okay. I, I think I came across something that said he was released from the hospital or something like that. Because um, coronavirus is a wild card, but it's mostly not a big deal. I'm going to be honest. Like, that's my opinion. I'm not a doctor, but I, I think I had it. I have severely compromised health. And uh, it, for me, anyways, I'd rather have... the that I'd rather have COVID than the flu, but it affects people differently. You know, some people get it and they don't even know they have it. Some people get it and they're on a respirator. So, you know, and 
I had an argument with, I forget who, I think with my care source manager, nurse lady, I was pointing out that they come out, the CDC come out with that information about uh, only 6% of all serious COVID, I think it might have been fatalities, I don't I talked about this before, but only 6% were isolated in the, in the, in the, I can't talk right, were isolated as far as like, that is the thing that killed them. Now, uh, they had every, the other 94% involved comorbidity, which means there was something else in there that, uh, you know, it's like the straw that COVID was the straw that broke the camel's back. The camel was already burdened down with uh, obesity, uh, old age, respiratory, heart issues, or uh, any combination of things. Um, just poor health in general. But only like 6% of the fatalities killed pe the person outright. And it's like of how many of those 6% are people that are over 80 years old that are considered relatively healthy but old because you can be old and healthy I've seen it I fixed, fished next to my uncle from World War II and he outlasted me when I was in my 20s as far as standing up and I was in my 20s and he was 76 years old and he stood up in this boat with me on Lake Erie and he was just standing there for hours now he went his health went to hell at when when he got into his uh, toward his uh, middle 80s but you can be like in your 70s or in your 80s and be in what they would call good health in other words you don't really have any serious conditions going on so how much of that 6% is what I'm saying is old people that are just, you know, they're old. They're old, things affect you more strongly. So, the COVID thing to me has been blown all out of proportion uh, to the, uh, because of political reasons. Everything in a political year, as far as what you hear in the media, anything is political fodder even uh, Trump catching COVID has been used as political fodder because uh, his political opponents have been pointing out that that shows how careless he was when he was not wearing a mask and when he was holding rallies and assembling people and whether they have a point or not they should be saying shit like well I hope he gets better he may be if they want to, if they want to sound like they got some class, he may be an opponent, and uh, we may have our uh, philosophical differences, but we want him to get better, so we can beat him fair and square. But no, they were like, he gonna die, he gonna die, he sucker the fuck. See, he's weak, and he's getting what he deserves for not wearing a mask and holding rallies, and they're all finger pointing. It's all identity politics, so hopefully none of you people fall prey to it. I did that identity politics. I am team blue. I am team red. My team good. Your team bad. You know, there's... got to think right and wrong. You don't think right and left. You know. But anything that happens in a political year is going to be used as political fodder. And that's what happened with this COVID outbreak is uh, I do not think it was engineered to be used as political fodder, but it ended up being political fodder. And uh, I do understand the severe, we were dealing with an unknown in March, so I do understand the severe lockdown, the severe measures they took because, you know, they had a disastrous situation in Italy. They didn't really know, they, they couldn't trust the Chinese to give accurate information on what it is they were dealing with. Um, apparently Harvard, uh, guys from Harvard University in Boston were working with the Chinese in sort of a, a biotech espionage thing. The actual virus was released in Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang China, uh, from a lab 
Initially, it was kind of funny. We thought it came from bats, but it was really cooked up in a lab why they were making it, if they were making it as a biological weapon, if they were just doing random experience or not, experiments or not. I don't know, but that's where it came from, is Wu-Tang and China. We originally thought it came from the wet markets where they were just, there's really super unsanitary conditions that are like uh, petri dishes for disease, but really it came from a lab. And, um, yeah, there's more stuff that I know about that that's not interesting or not really relevant. Um, but it was kind of funny, like, we thought it came from bats. So, uh, I remember a joke that Norm MacDonald told about it where it's all about, with jokes, it's all about timing, meter, and um, the way that things phrased, and the personality of the comedian, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it had something to do with, uh, this was bad news for, uh, McDonald's as they had to uh, cancel their new line of McBat sandwiches. So it was something like that. I just made that up on the fly. I don't even know if that's what that was, but it was a funny joke about uh, bats and bat sandwiches. <laughs> Anyways, we didn't know, basically, we didn't know what the fuck was going on. So the lockdown made sense. It doesn't, the whole mask thing, all of it, none of it makes sense anymore because we know what we're dealing with. And we know that it, we're going to have to live with it. You know, they're promising us a vaccine or something. I don't know what the latest news is on it or not. But, uh, yeah, it's not really something you can hide from if it can survive outside of its host for 72 hours. If you got a sickness, you know, don't take unnecessary chances. You know, that's all. Um, but yeah, as far as being afraid of it, I mean, initially I was like wearing those rubber gloves I was talking about. I was wearing them to get my mail because I found out that it could survive on surfaces uh, outside of the host. I'm like, mm, okay, that's bad because I live in a building with careless motherfuckers and they're touching all the doorknobs that I got to touch. And I don't know where they've been. I know where I've been, but I don't know where they've been. I've never seen anybody in this building, I've never seen this lady upstairs wearing a mask once. And I know she don't give a fuck because uh, she's smoking the crack pipe, so according to the drunken uh, pocket maniac that used to live up there, and he knows a lot about that kind of stuff, so, um, yeah. He was the guy that identified a drug in two seconds just by looking at it when I had these pills. He's like, oh, that's a bike in so many milligrams. And whatever, just by looking at it for like one second. I was like, okay, apparently we have an expert in our miss, myths as far as uh, drugs of all kinds. So, you know. Anyways, so she, so I guess the point of that whole screed was, um, yeah, don't give a fuck about the uh, COVID thing anymore. I don't care. When I went to the doctor and the guy broke my leg, um, he was like insisting on me wearing the masks. I said, mask or no mask? No, I said, mask or no mask at the dentist. And they said, no mask. And that was before, you know, they got to get inside your mouth, obviously. But that was way before they went to the mouth part of the proceedings. And I left, I forgot my mask. Um, I like, I threw it on my lap in the dentist chair. And then I got up and I uh, forgot my mask. So I walked out like with, uh, on a mask and they did not make a big deal about it at all. I got some dirty looks from some of the people. This was maybe in April. I got some dirty looks from some of the people in the office though and I'm like, she was talking to me because she had her windshield, you know, the windshield thing they got up with the, the, the bank teller little like window that you slide papers through and stuff. So she was cool, but I was like, look, I got to get out of here. I don't know. I, I think I dropped my mask back in the office, so I need, I need to leave. I'm making a lot of these people nervous, I remember saying. And everybody was looking at me, so I was like, I got to get out of here. And then there was some lady that held the door for me that was coming in. And I was like, no, you don't you don't have to do that, honey, because I got the walker. I'm like, just, you know, <laughs> like, just stay the fuck back. I think she had a kid, too. I was like, I felt bad, but I was just anxious to get out of the dentist, as always and um, didn't have my mask so now this becomes relevant because I don't know what the laws are as far as maskies in Ohio 
I don't think there's a law. I think it's up to the individual place you're at. Um, I was watching a, a football game that was uh, telecast from Cincinnati, and they had um, people, Cincinnati, Ohio, in case you know you're a foreigner outside of the state of Ohio. If there's, you know, because sometimes like there's several Cantons scattered all over the country. I still think we got the worst one, but yeah, there's lots of Cantons, so there might be a Cincinnati's elsewhere. Anyways, the point is. In the stadium, I didn't see nobody wearing a mask. So, you know, and yet at a high school football game where I placed, I showed you that video, this woman got tased for not wearing a mask at a high school game. At a pro game, apparently, because maybe you get to pay, you pay ticket prices or whatever. I didn't see anybody wearing a mask at this game. I was looking, I was like, Every time they show what little crowd is there, they had them all socially distanced. I mean, I don't see no masks. And then other sporting events, I noticed because of other sporting events, everybody who had a mask on. So there doesn't seem to be a mask law in Ohio. I'm not sure why that woman got tasered for not wearing a mask if there was no law against it or what that was about. It was interesting because it was a large, uh, darker hued security type person whether he was a cop or a security guard or what he was but he is arresting her for not wearing a mask while he's not wearing a mask and he is breaking the social distance law and endangering three or four people that are around that woman saying hey man quit roughing up my daughter quit roughing up my sister what the hell's going on here and uh so just he in other words is um enforcing a law Breaking it at the same time and making the situation way worse than it needs to be because there's actual hands-on physical contact and all these people all grouped together in a ball, not observing social distance as he is tasering this stupid young woman and carrying her away. If she did have a mask, maybe he she didn't have a mask and he was telling her to leave. I don't know. But improvise a motherfucking mask be like okay dude i'm gonna take off one of my socks i'm a nasty person what can i say i would actually do this rather than leave if i had like a long womanly socks on <laughs> instead of like short little manly socks on i like wrap the sock around my head and tie the knot in the back and look i spend a lot of time outside where i have to improvise shit so this all comes easy to me uh, i've improvised many a thing <laughs> in the wild I improvised a lean to out of uh, garbage bags and cut sticks during a storm I picked up a picnic table and rolled underneath it and let it fall down on top of me to, to try to escape rain I have hidden underneath trees I have uh, improvised bandages for myself when I have hurt myself and yeah you can be quite creative when the situation calls for it So, yeah, I would have found something to use as a mask and, like, avoided the whole situation. Like, get the fuck out of my face. I, 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 yeah, except for I would say it like this. I'm sorry, officer. I will uh, cut the sleeve off of my shirt <laughs> and wrap it around my face and keep my face covered. Just step away. And, by the way, you should probably pull up your mask. I mean, I understand that you're really obese. <laughs> I'll say that either and that you're probably having labored breathing issues because you weigh 350 pounds and are massive but uh, yeah you should probably pull up your mask you know what I'm saying I mean, people in glass houses should be like taser and folks throwing tasers is what I should have said but, you know see I can always find some bullshit to talk about and I'm amused <coughs> by my own creativity so you know, however limited it may be. Um, and I'm just watching football games like Gene watching football games anyways. So, and I'm, I'm just like, oh my God, Nick Chubb is hurt. I was like, I was just getting ready to sell all his cards. Baker Mayfield's still playing like shit. I gotta get rid of his cards. You know. It's like, but Nick Chubb is reliable as the sunset. 
and uh, motherfucker just had a freak thing happen where two 300 pound guys they call it a roll up but he's facing the wrong way and they roll up onto the back of a player's legs and it's 600 pounds a human being two guys boom shit's gonna happen they were start they were saying high ankle sprain I was like yes please high ankle sprain not the knee not the knee he has a history of knee and he had a severe knee near knee injury in college not the knee not the knee not the knee and then I waited and I woke up at uh, the inappropriate time of I don't know 11 o'clock at night and uh, checked the uh, news and it was not good MCL I don't know what the MC stands for but the L is for ligament and uh, he's out for six weeks minimum and I'm like he was this close to being ripe he was this close they're really hitting it big. I mean, I could have made money as off of his cards now, but I mean, like, really hitting it big, especially with the Browns. You know, they're fakes. It's it's a mirage, but they're three and one. They're looking like contenders. You know, but it's bullshit. They're, they're giving up like 34 points a game, and their defense sucks. And uh, they're just, you know, <laughs> their quarterback is horrible. It's just all a mirage. That bubble is gonna burst. And, uh, you know, it's like the injury bug just won't leave them alone. It's like uh, the injury bug is more like a swarm attacking them. They, like they poke the hive. But, uh, yeah, that was, for me, that was fairly devastating news. I probably will still be able to pay my landlord uh, because the rent's coming up next month for, like, Four months in advance, you know, seventeen. I probably still will be able to plunk down seventeen hundred bucks, and um, you know, not have to deal with them. That'd be November, December, January, February, not until March, which is pretty much when winter starts to fade into something else around here. Though weather is totally unpredictable around here now. So, and he seems to be cool with the whole arrangement of like me paying huge amounts of money up front huge amounts of money up front and like leave me the fuck alone he's like okay he uh texted me the other day to say that he put a couple of packages by my door and i just texted him back ty that's the only in interaction we've had in three months so that's the way we like it and uh I see no reason to disrupt that flow. If I have to, I only pay for three months rent in advance. I would prefer it to be four. Depends, you know, how ambitious I am as far as selling cards or if I want to bother. I have to be able to learn how to take good pictures. Why this is hard is because I'm doing it laying in bed, I think. Instead of like at a table where you can lay them flat, I gotta put them on stands, I gotta get the light angled right. You know, the reflective cards, I don't want my bald head like in the card because they're like mirrors. You know, the cards are like mirrors and you can see. There's actually a very funny, um, I don't know where I saw it at, but this guy was selling a teapot. Okay, he's selling a teapot on eBay. Uh, he decided to do, I don't know if he's a nudist or, I don't know, he gets a kick out of nude photography, but he was took a picture of a stainless steel shiny teapot naked and clearly in the reflection of the teapot you can see him and his little wee wee uh, in the reflection of the teapot it's like uh, yeah that you know at least fluff yourself a little bit man if you want to really sell that teapot you know what I'm saying because <laughs> that little two incher you got there man that ain't gonna sell nobody on nothing <laughs> But you can see it in the, in the teapot, so I got that problem with like reflective uh, card surfaces. So, um, yeah, I got like something going on. I have an unpleasant nature with my throat. See this? Even though I'm just producing bullshit, it's still doing something productive, which is somehow better to me than laying in bed watching other guys run around on a football field 
or watching TV shows. This is what I have been reduced to. Uh, selling cards, like I said, it's a pain in the butt doing it in bed. I don't. My knee fucking hurts. So I, you know, I even like uh, medicate myself before I mess with these pictures or mess with these cards because it gets on my nerves. Which I did not know was going to be like that. Or I wouldn't have spent thousands of dollars on cards. You know. Uh, to sell. I used to enjoy doing that. I used to be very good at it. Uh, I'm still kind of good at it. But I don't like doing it. So. It's not. You know. You don't make money. By not working at something. It's not like super easy. You have to. And you have unforeseen things like 600 pounds falling on a guy's leg happen to a guy you're invested in very, very heavily. Like, uh, very heavily. So, you know, he could come back. The Browns could actually be, because of just pure luck, they're 3 and 1. They could actually be a competitive team. Uh, maybe I could work on dumping the Mayfields and taking taking my lumps, you know, taking a loss because, you know, I think America's starting to get it, you know. They're starting to understand that he's not any good. So, um, I could start working on that. And just like taking what I can get and bailing before it's uh, too late because he's never going to change. He's always going to be shit. Um... That's the guy I spent $910 on 10 of his graded cards uh, before the season because I figured, hey, nobody could fuck this up. Yeah. Let's just say that in their win against Dallas, the uh, best thrown ball was not made by the quarterback. It was made by a wide receiver. So, yeah. I do have a whole shitload of um, OBJ, Odell Beckham Jr. cards I could try to sell. But I just don't have any ambition. I mean, I'm, I just don't, just don't want to. <laughs> I just don't, just don't want, it's just too much bother. And um, shipping is a nightmare as far as like how much uh, it, it costs to ship things. And, I don't know. Like I'd, I'd have to do research. It's just, it's just a big hassle. I just don't, I don't like it. I'm stuck doing it. I don't like it. Luckily, I don't have to. You know, I don't. Ha I was last month. I had to. I didn't have no choice but to sell and try to keep my head above water. But uh, this month, I'm in a little better position where I don't have to sell. I can just sell at my leisure. But. There is a timing thing involved in cards where, like, um, this Mayfield jump, uh, if you start, if the team can somehow keep winning and people can somehow across the country not realize it's in spite of the quarterback and not because of the quarterback, maybe I can sell some of these cards that I bought uh, and not lose too much money. I won't make any money, but I won't lose too much money. Again, it takes research, it takes time, you know, and it, you have to, like, surf the injury reports, you have to scout upcoming games, it's a whole thing that I used to enjoy doing that I do not enjoy doing anymore. So, I'm sure that's of no interest at all uh, to, it's not as interesting, let's say, as the other crap I was talking about earlier, which I don't even remember. Because uh, it's very hard to think straight in the uh, physical condition I'm in right now. So, where you're just, I'm actually perspiring right now because of uh, pain. So, yeah, I've been taking it easy on the neuron, you know, because uh, um, I just have. It just seems, it, it seems to aggravate the pain because. Uh, when it wears off, the pain is somehow worse. So, it seems to be it seems to aggravate me and the pain. So I don't. I'm not real big on it. I, where's my bottle? I still I don't even know where my bottle's at. 
I don't know when's the last time I took them, but you know, um, they they uh, again make me dizzy, and I feel like I should be walking around and um, working my heart because uh, I get winded too easy. Yeah, I was, oh, I was talking about um, the Wu-Tang Clan over there in uh, China and bat sandwiches and stuff, which is much more interesting than um, my uh, sports card dilemma and the whole business of selling sports cards. But yeah, that was a tragic blow. I'm watching the game where I should be happy because the Browns are winning. They're beating the Cowboys, which the Cowboys are lousy and all banged up, but... Uh, we're still beating the Cowboys. The Cowboys are a big deal. So I should have been happy, but no, my favorite player. That's my favorite player, too. Not only am I heavily invested in him, and he's a great player, and he was poised. Those cards were poised to go up. As a matter of fact, that's what I tried to make a deal. And the guy's like, no, I'm not selling you that those cards for that price because they're only going to go up. And I got news for you, dude. When a guy tears his uh, MCO, his cards don't go up when he's out for six weeks his cards don't go up because uh, you don't know if he's going to be the same guy now he was through a much worse injury in college and overcame it completely and that's why another thing I don't even know if it's the same knee that got fucked up uh, last Sunday it's another thing I got to check into is uh, if it's the same knee with additional trauma placed upon it or not but, uh, yeah, that's just, those were cards, like, I was like, that's a lock. That's a lock. All I got to do is wait until, uh, the guy was averaging 5.7 yards a carry, which is a very good average. To put it in perspective, you probably heard of Barry Sanders and Jim Brown. Uh, it kills their lifetime average, um, it's over a half a yard more, I think, than Jim Brown averaged for his whole career, and Barry Sanders averaged five yards a carry for his whole career. So, yeah, all I had to do was need. All I needed was like a full season out of this guy, and I'm gonna make thousands of dollars. Knew he's gotta he's gotta have this freak accident happen to him because football cards to me are voodoo dolls, and when I when I acquire them bad things happen to them like what's happening to my boys <coughs> mm. uh, try some water maybe yeah. voodoo dolls I like that I invest in a player, I gotta get rid of them quick before the gods find out that I did so they can rain hellfire upon him just to spite me. Anyways, I don't know. Like I said, I don't got much to talk about. This is just bullshit. Since the 22nd of September, this has all been bullshit. Uh, yeah, it was. I was having a hard enough time getting by before whatever happened to my knee happened, and now I can't sleep right, which is very frustrating. Very disorienting and not productive at all. And, um, you know, knee surgery doesn't sound like. I got just bad things in my future. There's nothing but bad things because knee surgery is one thing if you don't have CRPS and my left leg is basically a stick. So I see nothing but pain, torture, and hopefully even if the knee surgery goes well, it will be pain and torture. But the knee surgery, it's probably going to happen, have to happen eventually. It might go badly. And then what? And what's going to happen to me? 
because I can't count on nobody to take care of me. I'm not having strangers to take care of me. So, you know, hence the science of suicidal ideation. It always cracks me up, like people that uh, like freak out over that. You know, it's like, okay, quit projecting yourself onto me. If you were me, you would understand. Don't project your nonsense onto me. Or whatever, if it's religious based or if it's a uh, you know, like, uh, how could you think like that, you know, it's like, or if it's your family, it's like, your family's just being, I told my sister before, it's like, you should want me to die, if you loved me, you would want me to die, she's like, I don't understand you, I'm like, what is to understand, if you're suffering, if you were suffering miserably, I would want you to die, so you wouldn't suffer anymore, if you believe in heaven, and you believe I'm a good person, I would be better off because I, w I would be in heaven. If you don't believe in heaven and you believe in oblivion, I'm not in pain anymore. It's a win. win. So what is to understand? So I don't, you know, it's just people's got these, these attitudes. And, you know, they're being selfish because, you know, I'm such a charming, lovely human being that you know, people will naturally miss me. I can understand that, you know. But uh, if you want to have, have a more generous spirit, you you should be like, I hope you die. Because <laughs> I ain't gonna have but fucking horror and pain in my future. Period. I mean, uh, there's, there's going to be like a, a horrible rehabilitation period with this knee. Even if they, if they ever operate on it. And I got CRPS, which is going to come matters unbelievably because my left leg is pretty much useless my right leg used to be my good leg so it's going to be a goddamn nightmare and also I'm not a young man and I've already been through so much that I'm not sure I have the will to be up to the challenge of the whole thing and uh, frankly I don't really want to go through it I'm just probably going to go through it just because just to see what will happen a lot of times I think I was reading a book about um, or listening to a book about I don't read books anymore but listen to them uh, about a guy that's like uh, the real reason that uh, people get go keep going if they're curious about what will happen next so you know but if what will happen next is like uh there's really no good outcome. You really don't care what will happen next. It's like, uh, yeah. When I punch through this glass window, what will happen next? Will I lacerate an artery? Will I get minor cuts? Uh, will I have to go to the hospital? Will it kill me? You know, there's no good. I'm, I'm curious what will happen if I just go ahead and punch through this glass window. You know, uh, so when there's all the outcomes are bad, it's like yeah, I'm a little less curious, okay? Because I don't enjoy pain and suffering, and that's what I got in my future: pain and suffering. And it, worse yet, having to deal with the uh, my lack of patience and people. I don't have. I'm not patient with people anymore. I don't. You know, I'm not the person I was. I got the benzo sensitivity on top of it, you know, and then like uh, I'm gonna have to deal with people. Like I was bombed out of my skull when I was getting my uh, leg fucked with on the 22nd of last month, and I was still irritable as fuck. I was still like, "What in the fuck is wrong with these people?" And it was like I was like, "Thank God I'm, I'm fucking high as shit," because if I wasn't, man, I would be screaming at these idiots. What the fuck is your problem, man? Or like a Ugh. I'd be like my Uncle Joe, a World War II vet, because uh, once he had like two things. He had the old man don't give a fuck attitude, a bad temper, which he always had, and he was a World War II vet. In other words, I don't give a fuck about no safety safety uh, belt law. I fought in, I fought on in goddamn Guadalcanal, okay? You know what I mean? Even with his son, the cop in the car, they have these like little 
ritual they go through where he'd be like, uh, you know, it's the law to wear a seatbelt. He's like, he's like, look, boy, I predate seatbelts. Therefore, the law does not apply to me. I'm not going to wear a seatbelt. I'm never wearing a seatbelt. Uh, I don't know why we have these conversations. And he goes, well, I'm a cop and I am in a car with you, so I sort of feel obligated to uh, mention it from time to time. <laughs> I'm in the back seat. <laughs> I think it's the funniest fucking thing ever. <laughs> But yeah, it's like, um, I don't want to be like that because uh, people already dislike me and I don't want to give them more cause to dislike and or hurt me now that I am no longer formidable. I used to be formidable, so if I wanted, I was still tactful because I did not like conflict, but if I wanted to say something, I would say something. And uh, yeah, you want to go, we can go, type of attitude. But now it's a different situation it's like uh, they wouldn't hit me or do anything to me because uh, I am now clearly fragile and uh, um, they would just not like me and uh, possibly hurt me some more and uh, yeah I never I never scored high on the likability factor so um, that's what I'm thinking about, like, when I'm going through my rehab with my knee, if I ever get surgery upon it, I've got to put up with these people that are torturing me and put up with the stupid things that people say and put up with human beings in general, which I am not good at anymore, you know. I, I'm just not good at it. I used to be patient, very, very patient, but I am not like that anymore. So, um, yeah, this is why I haven't felt like doing a video for a few days is because it's just gonna be I knew it was gonna be like this this bad not cheery uh because I don't feel cheery I can't even sleep at appropriate hours I can't walk I'm laying here with my leg fucking killing me I'm not even moving it I move it uh, it doesn't work right I can't feel anything but pain in it therefore I'm more likely to fall um still have to work my heart got the heart condition thing so I still have to work my heart and I got winded after like just walking around with the cane for a half an hour and even stopping and like rearranging cans of cat food in the cupboard and stopping and feeding the cats and stopping and doing this or doing that picking up this or not even like a real like <laughs> walk like I walk that fast uh, but actually stopping and standing and being up and around and moving and doing. Um, yeah, it hurts while I'm lying down, let alone when I'm doing that. And uh, yeah, so all prospects for me are grim. And uh, there's, yeah, I'm not, there's going to be no magic happening here. There's going to be no, my family's not suddenly going to be sober and sane. Um, you know, there's, it's, there, my knee is not going to be magically fixed. I mean, I might have the experience of having knee replacement surgery and be like this guy <laughs> walking up my steps. Hello. I asked him, I'm like, man, you got that brace on there. And I mean, I mean, does it? I mean, do you feel like they helped you? He goes like, well, at least it don't hurt as bad as it used to. I'm like, how much pain you got now? He goes, almost none. So I can be... <laughs> and not in pain. I guess that would be an improvement, but what do I got to go through to get to that point? I mean, how do they even replace a knee with a plastic knee? And that guy is working with a healthy body and not CRPS. So that's something else to consider. Um, yeah. So, depressing fodder for sure. I got to have a little bit of fun in it. Talking about bat sandwiches anyway. I'm getting pretty hungry at bat sandwiches starting to sound pretty good to me. I have told you before that I stood still in nature and had like a bat like land right beside me and I turned my head very slowly toward it and I examined it rather closely. It's on camera. And uh, I was like, 
thinking to myself, you is one ugly motherfucker, just like uh, an Arnold Schwarzenegger on Predator. And uh, it was like, making bat faces too. It's like, man, you even make bat faces with your face all scrunched up and shit like that, man. You know, helping yourself, man. I'm not talking about like putting on makeup or like trimming the eyebrows or anything like that. I'm just, just don't make all them ugly goddamn faces. I probably told you that I caught a bat and picked it up before. Man, I told you that. But, um, bats, this bat got all fucked up somehow. Its radar got fucked up. I'm not sure how or however it is. Their sonar. I guess it's sonar. They echolocate. And it got, it was all messed up, though. I don't know what the fuck happened to it. But it was like skimming the water where I was fishing and I was like what the fuck is wrong with this fucking bat they usually skim the water to try to pick bugs up off the water but this was obviously it was all out of control so it lands in the grass beside me where I'm fishing and naturally I walk over to it and pick it up I pick it up by its wings and it did this <laughs> trying to fly and I was like oh that's kind of funny it's trying to fly and the like uh the middle part of it's going and I got a hold of the wings and I'm examining it and looking at all they got all incisors and they were all bright white and deadly looking and I'm like this thing is full of diseases I'm sure but kind of cool and I was like fly be free and I threw it up in the air and immediately plummeted down in, into the water and I'm like oh shit I think I just drowned in a bat but then it managed to get out of the water and take off and I thought you know, I was like, I don't know what the hell happened to it. But I've seen, um, uh, at a Beach City Dam, I was fishing with my brother. And my brother had something that emitted sound. It, I don't know. He was, I forget, it's too long ago, but I forget the device he had. But whatever it was, it was fucking up the sonar with the bats. There was a bunch of bats out. They always come out, like, at dusk, you know, to hop for mosquitoes. They're actually our friends because they eat the hell out the mosquitoes. But, uh, anyways, there's all these bats, like, running into each other. It was funny as hell. You know, cruel to the bats, but funny as hell. They were all, like, running into each other, this flock of bats, and they were all this discombobulated. And, uh, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. And it's like my brother had some kind of device that he was using to, uh, I don't have to ask him about it. Um, uh, but I was like, whatever he's doing, he was messing up their sonar, and they were, like, they were, yeah, it looked like a, uh, like a comedy routine like they were five billion bats it was it was hilarious uh, cruel but hilarious um, I had to ask him about that but yeah I got a lot of memories that I don't remember so you know and uh, yeah I gotta catch my brother in the right frame of mind where he's actually receiving information when you talk to him, so that's why I'm gonna ask him about the pictures. I thought about the pictures. Like, uh, could you like gather up these pictures for me and send me the pictures? But instead I used my, um, uh, hey, let's talk about something serious moment to talk about the cake and the money I owed him and how I wanted to smuggle him the cake and how, like, if he mentions the cake to anybody, you'll never get any food out of me again. I will never give you any food ever again. The cake is secret. I said, keep it secret like we're smuggling drugs. Yeah, but I said, I don't want to. I know you like, you got a sweet tooth type of thing going on, which I don't have. I'm like, I know you like cake. It's a free cake. And I don't want to feed it to raccoons because they lick their own assholes. And therefore, they don't care about it being cake. You know, they will eat anything. So, yeah. So, like, uh. Here is this cake. <laughs> so that's what I used my moment like where I can like, can we stop talking about bullshit for like five seconds and talk about something else? So I got like one of those during our conversations I can use. Where like, uh, cause he shuts down emotionally about anything. Uh, I'm like, look man, so next time I will be like, look man, you know, you, you got such and such picture and such and such picture, will you please send them to me? And I'll pay for the fucking stamps. But I would like to have the picture with the frog on the head. And the picture of my dad. And uh, you know whatever picture that has me in it. I would like to have. And the one picture of my dad. And uh, yeah, yeah I don't know if he wants them. 
for himself, I'd be like, I can give them back to you. I just want to show them to you guys. That's all the only reason I want them. I don't have any pictures in the house here except for a few uh, fishing pictures that I don't even look at. Uh, as far as like any framed pictures or anything, in, there's no, no such thing. I remember going to my Uncle Lee's house and uh, he had his whole, them old fashioned um, box TVs, he had his whole TV covered with pictures to the point where like there's too many pictures, your pictures are blocking out your pictures. Um, but like he just said, he would watch TV and he'd have all these faces of all the past looking back at him, you know, like uh, for my family it would be like the end of The Shining where Jack Nicholson is in the picture. But apparently he had good family memories, or at least manufactured some in his head. So he, I remember that. I was like, watching TV at his house is weird because it's like I'm looking at the TV, but all these dead faces are looking at me. And uh, he had pictures all over his house. And I know a lot of uh, people, like, uh, that house down there has got a whole shitload of pictures. I gave him my picture that I only have digitally now of uh, me with the guitar upside down and the long girly hair when I was, I think, 19 or 20. Um, when I was like, uh, you need to stay out of prison really, really badly because you way too man pretty boy. When I was like that, a sudden itch. I was checking for, see if I was getting bit by something. Huh? But, um, yeah. So yeah, I, I swear, sooner or later, I'll find that window with my brother where he's receptive to information, and uh, see if I can get him to send me some pictures of like family pictures. Um, I can think of a few off the top of my head. We don't, we didn't have an extensive amount of family pictures. Now I remember like it's crazy. And, um, but, uh, my cousins in Florida, the one cousin that I talk to all the time that I talk about, their mother was so into pictures, but she didn't have no album for them. They were just in a gigantic bag. I'm talking about pictures going back to when it seemed like they were tin print, like they were using mercury to develop them and stuff. I mean, like old, old pictures. And she knew all the people in the pictures. And one night, because they didn't have no money and a whole lot to do. She brought out her giant paper bag full of pictures, which weighed like God knows how many pounds, put them on the kitchen table, and me and her and a couple other people sat there, and we just looked at pictures. She just reach in the bag and pull out a picture and say, this person is this person, this person is that person, and she'd pull up. We just looked at pictures for like hours. And, um... If I was an adult, I would have bought her a couple of photo albums. Somebody should have. Uh, I mean, though, some of those pictures were so old, they had to be from like 1910, 1920, going way back in her family. And um, there's a picture of my dad that I don't know if it still exists. I'll have to ask my brother about it. But. My dad, when he was a young man, I think it was maybe before he met his mom, so it was my one shot at not existing, which is my sole wish is never to have been born, of course. But he hitchhiked, because people used to do that back in the day. This was like in 1940, he was hitchhiking. Guy that picks him up is drunk as a skunk. Well, they didn't, my dad didn't particularly give a fuck about that, because you know, there was a lot of knowledge about drunk driving and how dangerous it was and shit like that. But this guy had on a collision into another car. My dad goes through the windshield, flies through the air, lands in a field, and it's okay. The driver of the car, they took him out in pieces. So the car is like just folded up like an accordion and my dad is like standing there with his arm on the car like and he's like 20 I don't know if that picture still exists but I would like to have that picture and I think that is 
either while he was dating my mom or maybe even before he met my mom. I don't know. The story behind the picture is, is just as important as the picture, but it's not a forgettable picture. I haven't mentioned it on here before because, like I said, my whole head is uh, kind of a messed up filing cabinet with no particular organizational system when it comes to such matters. I do feel like I have a frog in my flip frog in my throat which is my mom's way of saying that you need to hock a loogie so I am not going to do that on camera but it seems to be a necessary process it may be a holdover from my smoking days I don't know but occasionally yeah a pork frog must get this frog out of his throat and go about his merry way but think about that I almost got to not exist because my dad hitchhiked was picked up by a drunk driver whose car was folded up like an accordion in a head-on collision. He, however, was thrown through the windshield and clear of the accident and lived to produce misery and kill people and uh, traumatize people. And, but, you know, God smiles upon the just and the unjust, as does the rain fall upon us all. Okay, frog, I gotta get you now. Goodbye. Wait a minute. I moved the cursor foolishly. It was a nice ending, too.